<laughs> First dart. Then Film Brain and now the Angry Joe Show. Soon I will have all of the channel awesome's replies on social networking sites and I shall take over the world! <laughs> Oh my god, that's a shit plan. Um... Oh hi, I'm Jamie the Comic and welcome to Review the Shit. The show I review shit, you're too pussy to watch. Now, let's talk about Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is a marketing genius and I can only imagine the creator Kazuki Takahashi was laughing to the bank with his personalized Yu-Gi-Oh card created just as a form of ID for him. But Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't actually start out the way we know it is today. It originally started out in 1996 as a manga called, well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Although the story with the puzzle and the concept of not knowing who the spirit is was the same, the games were more dark forms of torture to teach a wrongdoer a lesson, such as a bully falling into a river with a man-eater monster, or a kidnapper being burnt alive. Yeah, I told you it was dark. The concept of Duel Monsters was originally a one-off game in the series which introduced us to Kaiba sparking a second episode rematch and a 13 minute movie. It was so popular they turned the Duel Monsters concept into its own series. Spin-off series, movies, card games, video games, action figures, board game posters and even a music CD! A fucking music CD! But we are here just to review the first Yu-Gi-Oh movie or technically the second Yu-Gi-Oh movie but the first Duel Monsters movie. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie, or Yu-Gi-Oh! and the Pyramid of Light. Now, unlike the Pokemon movie or Digimon movie, it does actually start off with a backstory for newcomers. Which is stupid, because in order to get the backstory of the characters and their relationships, you have to watch the fucking show! What? What? How come you're not expanding the footage to widescreen to show off your PC is expensive enough to render HD footage like you did with the other movies? Oh, right, that. Well, in the show and even this movie, they love close-ups. And they love them so much that they put it in every single extreme moment. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, an extreme moment? There must be so much of the... No, 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 no. Unlike movies that use close-up for extreme moments, just to emphasise the point and make it more extreme, this show goes way, way over the top with his extremeness. I mean, I I'm talking about every sentence in Yu-Gi-Oh is fucking epic. And I mean epic. And I don't mean it's always epic, but they like to make everything epic. Did I mention they like to make it epic? Ah, I need to go to the bathroom, but we're out of toilet paper! No worries, I have some novelty toilet paper! Use it at your will! Excellent. Now I can wipe my ass in comfort and feel rich to the bathroom! So to sum up, too much closer for stretching the screen and it would be a huge, huge distraction. Well, I'm just saying. So Yugi is about to complete the puzzle and we see the real reason they were given the backstory again. So they can show that when the puzzle's completed, something in Egypt at the same time happens, trapping some Egyptologists in a tomb. <laughs> now in the show that happened, there was a massive event that happened in Egypt which was around the same time as Yugi completing the puzzle. But the tomb in the movie was never established in the show. Which makes my theory correct. They don't care about newcomers, they only redid the opening to accommodate the Slap Tom story. We cut to present day where Seto and Yugi are having a rematch, when holy shit they have the r I guess I should explain here. In Japan, the show had the real scans of the cards, but when it was translated to English, they removed the scans and replaced it with generic looking cards with images that didn't even come close to the real life drawings. This was because of laws that prevented in-show advertisement to kids. But stop in the action to cut to a commercial break to show this! Donatella, Michelangelo, Raphael! Four ninja fighting turtles who battle evil in the sewers of New York City. And this! Thing hands. The earthquake and moon shaken power of the thing can be yours. I am the It's perfectly okay. This? Bad. These? Dream Phone, the real talking video phone game. He's elephant, the elephant, see him fall. Ready for a Pokemon adventure? Okay. 
even as a kid, when I learnt that was the reason, it still bothered me. The show itself is a big advertisement for the game. Just give us the scans and leave us alone! So they had the scans, making this the only reason I wanted to see it, but ended up watching it on TV for free, and they continue playing. Blue-Eyes Ultimate Dragon! And that's just for starters! Next, I play a magic card that doubles my dragon's attack points. Megamore! Now my blue eyes is more powerful than any monster on the field. Wow. I was actually going to win. I mean, he's got the most powerful monster on the field at the moment. Yugi has no face down cards. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm actually excited! Well, obviously I'm not excited that the good guy is going to lose and the bad guy is going to prevail, but it's the first time we've ever seen it! <laughs> Except for that time. But this is the first time we're ever going to make it legitimate. Okay, let's see it. Come on, Kaiba. Win. Win! My Egyptian god cards possess powers far beyond mere monsters! They what? By sacrificing two of them, I can bestow upon the third infinite strength! Ugh, they're melding, pooling their energy. Yes, I am invincible. Ha! Now my obelisk, the Tormentor, is the strongest monster in play. No, I can beat your god cards. I won't lose to you again. Obelisk, the Tormentor, show him what true power is all about. Attack! Fist of Fury! No! My dragon! It wasn't your turn, Yugi! But in the show, you will begin to see that Yami and Yugi is like the Batman of anime. No matter how bleak the situation seems, he always wins. Why? Because of Batman. <laughs> Yugi. But it was just a simulation. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kaiba, but I was certain that our calculations were correct this time, sir. If you just give us one more chance, sir. So you can fail again? Sorry. Please, sir, we're close to postulating a winning stratagem. Well, if I were you, I'd start postulating myself a new job. Oh. You've had more than enough time to find a way to beat Yugi's Egyptian god cards. But as usual, I'll I have think to do it you myself. should be firing them for making out. computers that catch fire rather than not figuring out a way to beat your arch enemy. I mean, th they could have killed people with those computers. And you only care about beating one. Man, or grown-up man, in a children's card game. Where's your priority, Seto? In fact, coming back to that, the majority of the players in the show are grown-up adults. Why are they playing a children's card game? Elsewhere, Maximilian Pegasus is having a nightmare while a ghostly figure places a card in his deck. to be a kid's show. <laughs> you know this is meant to be a kid's show. <laughs> fucking blue eyes white jacket. <laughs> I fucking want one. I hope you know what you're doing, big brother. I was just hoping the same thing. You think I've got it all? So he flies to Pegasus's house to ask him for a favor. Pegasus, you and I have never been friends, so let's not start pretending that we are. Oh my, sounds like someone needs a hug. No thanks, but since you mention it, there is something I need. Listen, 
I've come to your little fantasy island in search of a card powerful enough to beat Yugi's three Egyptian god cards. And you believe I might have this all-powerful god-smiting card because... Because you created the game, Pegasus. See that? That one line is the only concrete evidence of establishing the characters. He created the game. Notice they haven't fully said who Mokfo was or why Kaiba has such a huge ego. So again, proves my theory that they redid the opening just to add a filler! And why would I duel you? Because if you'll put up the card I need to beat Yugi, I'll wager these. <sighs> I'll explain. In the show, it was established that there only existed four Blue Eyes White Dragons. The three Kaiba has, and the one that was destroyed in the first episode of the show. But, the newcomers from this movie would have automatically assumed that Kaiba could have just recreated the cars because, why, he created the game without realising they were a limited edition. Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie Newcomers not welcome! welcome. Kaiba defeats Pegasus and takes down the cards he created to take down the card cards and the other cards that the ghost placed in the deck. Looks like you had two cards up your sleeve. What do you mean? Two cards? Kaiba, there was only one. Yeah, right. Nice try, you snake. Back home, Yugi is ganged up on by people who want to take down the King of Games. So they hide out in the museum. But after reading the writing on the sarcophagus, Yugi's puzzle and the Pyramid of Light interact and Yugi gets a glimpse of the future. From the light comes the dark. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? So Yugi runs off to warn Kaiba that he's in trouble, but Mokuba is sent to come and get him. On the way up, Yugi and Yami talk about what's going on. But it's too much of a coincidence that Kaiba would send for us right after the vision we had at the museum. There must be something more going on here. You ready, partner? Ready! They switch bodies and the duel with Kaiba begins. After a few turns, Yami has all the god cards in play, which gives Kaiba the chance to play the trap card, Pyramid of Light, which removes the god cards from play. Kaiba's ego gets the best of him, and if you watch the show, which I'm guessing you did, because New Kaiba's not welcome. welcome! You would have known it would have from the start. What's this? In the puzzle, Yugi, Joey and Tristan meet up and find a room full of mummies where Anubis has merged into. And the game continues, and as their life points decrease, so does their soul energy. Kaiba, once again, your ridiculously overinflated ego blinds you to the truth! I am far from beaten! Behold the future, since you won't live to see it for yourself. After being shown the future, Teo willingly leaps into the puzzle to remind them friendship is the world's best currency. Teo, how'd you find us? Are you kidding me? Remember the friendship symbol we drew? Oh, fuck off, you needy cow! The ink may have faded, but our bond never will. Right. Guys. We are all with you. Guys, we'll mummies. Always be with you. Hello. Thanks. Look around you. Mummies. Hello. Mummies. Your pathetic little bond is nothing against my power. Soon my soul will be fully restored and your world shrouded in darkness. Yet you fools prattle on about togetherness. Then so be it. <laughs> you gain no fucking sympathy for me, I tell ya. Taya, watch out! I could do that. Back outside, Kaiba is being manipulated by Anubis. Gonna be different, Yugi. 
You may have beaten me in the past, but now there's nothing you can do to stop me from having my revenge. But it's Will Over runs Anubis and tries to destroy the Pyramid of Light as part of his strategy. No, I need the Pyramid to destroy the Pharaoh! What am I saying? I must destroy it to gain control of Yugi's God Cards! However, Anubis doesn't like his plan, so he shows up himself to take over the door and take down Yami. You have served me well, little worm, but you have outlived your usefulness! So it's been you behind this whole duel, manipulating Kaiba all along, the Egyptian Lord of the Dead, Anubis. I am pleased that you remember me after all these years, my Pharaoh. It will make my ultimate vengeance all the sweeter. You will fall and my reign of destruction shall begin. Back inside, Yugi is able to destroy the wall which held the power of Anubis. Sense of weakness in the pyramid's power. Hmm. Yugi. And Yami then uses Monster Reborn to bring back Kaiba's monster to destroy the Pyramid of Light. Stand up to it! Go, Shining Nova! Use all your power to finish what you started before and destroy the Pyramid of Light! The impossible! Your opponent tried and failed to destroy the pyramid with that dragon. You alone couldn't make such a difference. You're quite right that I could not have done it all alone. I was able to defeat him with the power of friendship and the heart of the cards. Go and get your cards at your local Tesco stores. And bring a friend because your friend needs those cards. We need money from said cards. Buy the cards now. Buy the fucking cards. We need more money. You can't wait for the game to be we put the fucking cards in this movie. Just do it. Buy fucking cards. Yami is then able to bring back the god cast and defeat Anubis, but it's not enough as he casts a spell that allows monsters to become real. Which is stupid because all he had to do was transform into a monster, like he did, and destroy the world himself. Yeah, it would have been longer, but he wouldn't have the risk of having the Yu-Gi-Oh cards come to life and defeat him. Your plan sucks! So Yugi and Yami are able to defeat him and the world has no idea how close they were to being destroyed and the show never talks about it. Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie, don't waste your time! It's nothing but a filler and a stupid one at that. You won't understand the story unless you're a regular viewer of the show. The dumbed down speeches like friendship is way too corny and it doesn't explain the question that everyone wants to know. What does Yu-Gi-Oh! mean? Huh. Good to know. Oh, come on, you guys do it too.